Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to this CX talk. I'm really very happy to have Anna Maria Zumsteck again with us. We had really a good feedback on, on the last webcast that we did, and therefore we decided together to deep dive in two, three questions that the audience asked. Anna Maria, very welcome. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks to you for this opportunity to, uh, you know, to talk about our passion. Uh, and so I appreciate it. It's, it's a pleasure to have you again and thank you very much for your time, the time that you are sharing with us. Let's really start now deep timing because the audience know you, they know what you did at um, Zero Week Insurance, they know your passion about customer experience, they know that you did a great implementation of NPS and we learned quite a lot that NPS it's not about the KPI but it's, it's really about also understanding the customer. The first question I would have is, what's the difference between the transactional NPS and the relationship NPS? Thank you. And that's a very good question and a very important question. You know, I, I think that um, if you think about service being the king, uh, you know, you would be looking very much at transactional NPS. But actually, you know, it's, this is a trinity. Uh, so it really covers the brand and it also covers the quality of your product. So when you look at the relationship APS, what you are trying to understand is really the entire um, range of, um, you know, the relationship with your customers. So what are their perceptions of your brand? Uh, how do they relate to your product? And that is not just the quality of the product, but also the value proposition and the services. Um, so I see RMPS as the mother of all metrics because it does give you a good overview of the entire relationship. It allows you to understand where you know, your customer is, not just in terms of services, because your service might be perfect, but if the product is not fitting their expectation, if the product is not uh, you know, offered at the right price, uh, or if your brand is not a trusted brand, you know, if you have problems with reputation or with uh, awareness, you know, if your product is not known and the customer isn't sure whether you will deliver or not. So, you know, understanding where the customer is in all these areas allow you to be more targeted in all other first in your entire strategy, but also on your TMPS. So then you go to, you know, to uh, a key, a very key, uh, assuming that, you know, your brand is, um, is well known, is trusted, you are offering the right product for the right price in the view of your customer, you know, then you look in detail to that journey, to those interactions that you have, the service interactions, and, you know, and identifying the pain points, you can go into the TMPS. TMPS stands for transactional NPS, and transactional NPS, as the name says, looks at every single transaction. Uh, so you actually then go and um, assess the level of um, satisfaction that your customer has uh, at every single point of the interaction, and also by the different channels, because nowadays, you know, interactions are not linear, are, you know, that's why we talk about omni channels. So, and then you can, you know, so TMPS is a lot more punctual. It's really going to a specific service transactions and allowing you to understand what you need to improve in those. So I would always um, first implement RMPS, you know, derive the strategy from the RMPS, which gives me a good understanding of my customer. And then based on that, you know, go punctually into TMPS. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I think it, it was really, really a good example, perhaps also for the audience to understand. And uh, I make an example that we didn't discuss, perhaps mm -hmm. you can correct me. If mm -hmm. I think about uh, my passion, not customer experience, but now in this case, uh, soccer, the one played with the feet. Um, the relationship NPS is, let's say, the relationship that I have with the team I like, or let's say mm -hmm. I love. Mm -hmm. And the transactional NPS is more about one transaction. It means I'm not, not happy about how the, um, the team played in during the last game. And therefore, I would give a bet, a bet result from, for the last 
for the last game, but over the relationship that I have with this with this team over the years, I can give another value because I really like the how they are playing. I like how they are and so on. Is this correct? Uh, yes, this this is correct. Uh, an example that I um, that I think is very graphic uh, for most people and I use a lot is with uh, um, car brands. You know, if you love a brand, let's say as a, as a man, you probably, I don't know, love a Lamborghini or a, um, a Ferrari, uh, you know, and uh, if you could afford to buy a Lamborghini or a, a, a Ferrari, you know, um, you are already, you know, you're very happy with the brand. You are proud to drive a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, your, your favorite brand, it can be any, uh, you know, and if it happens that when you take it to the garage, they didn't wash it, they didn't clean it properly. You know, you are upset about that, but it does not change. So I think that that's the important thing to understand that for different products, different brands, um, people place different, has a emo different emotional impact. You know, the brand side, the price side, and the interaction side. And in certain cases, the interaction side will be, will impact the fact that the customer would, might not come back again. But you know, if somebody doesn't clean your beloved car, well, you will still love it, you know, so, yeah. Thank you, Ana Maria. I think I would say Ferrari, but <laughs> let's go to yeah. the next. <laughs> <laughs> and are there other KPIs related to, to NPS that you would measure? Uh, yes, definitely. You know, so I mean, for us, for example, as I was saying, when you think about the um, the RMPS, uh, you are looking at the brand. So obviously, as I said before, a brand with low awareness or a brand with low reputation can be, you know, uh, can have a negative impact on your NPS. So also, you know, monitoring your your brand awareness, your brand, doing some brand research and understanding where you stand. Uh, is quite important and matching this with the uh, the other metrics. Uh, also doing some uh, product comparison, price comparison, understanding what your um, competitive advantage is, you know, so why should customers come to you? Uh, understanding what the customer is expecting from your pro uh, product in terms of features as well as price. Uh, it could be also a very important metric uh, you then have your market studies, your NPS market studies to understand the market. But I think there I always recommend uh, to be cautious because you need to understand if you are not conducting your own market study, you need to understand what is available, what type of studies is being conducted. You know, is it an omnibus study? Is it a panel study? Um, how was the question worded? Was it at the beginning of the question at the end? what were the sample sizes for all competitors. So I think it's, it's a lot more complex than what meets the eye. And um, um, I guess, and obviously uh, you look at your business KPIs, you look at your customer loyalty, you look at uh, product density. You know, I think that um, CX cannot exist in isolation. We need to show the value that we produce and that is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anna Maria. I, I fully agree what you are, you are saying, and I think it's also important to link NPS, its relationship NPS or the transactional NPS, with also financial KPIs like return on investment, new revenues, and so on, that you can prove what you are doing, that you are also bringing forward your, your company. I think. Uh, and one that I just forgot, and I think is probably one of the most important, is your employee NPS. You know, I think that is so crucial, so crucial. For me, maintaining the employees are such a crucial part of the equation. And they are key players in the relationship. They are very important, their opinion matter. Indeed, I am, you know, I'm very keen on having, on doing product MPS on employees, separate to the um, general customer. And I think that we should take very seriously the input uh, that employees give us about every, touch point and uh, you know and every aspect of the relationship because they deal day day to day with the customer they know you know customers might be shy uh, our employees know and they care you know and and i think they they deserve this recognition yeah uh, sure the, the 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 employees should be the first fans of a company and therefore it's important to understand what motivate them what engage them and what should be 
improved in order to improve the experience. At the end, it's always, if we are speaking about also then transactional NPS, uh, your example with the car, you need to have motivated, engaged employee in order to have happy customer because somebody that is engaged goes the extra mile, try to find new solution, new way to, to cope with, with what the customer was, was asking. And, and I think this is, this is really key. It's not about speaking about KPIs because I see quite a lot of companies that are defining KPIs targets. Let's say NPS should be at this level and then they are doing everything to get, to get at this level. What's what's your your view on on this topic? Uh, you you as I said, you can uh, you know you can have an NPS uh, of let's say ten by having you know ten percent um, promoters and eighty percent uh, passives, and you can have an NPS of ten by having fifty percent promoters and forty percent tractors. You know, so if you only uh, look at a metric you might be missing totally the point. You know, there are many ways to get to the same MPS. So I think that there are other aspects that are a lot more important than the metric by itself. Also putting um, target metric, and I'm not, I, and don't take me wrong, I don't have anything against having uh, MPS as a KPI and as a target metric, but I think it should not be looking in isolation. It should be, you know, you should go deeper into the metric itself. You should understand the composition of the metric and you should understand the underlying comments from the customers. You should really listen to what they are saying. You know, I, I think it's, um, um, it's crucial uh, to understand what your customers want. That's, that's the main point. Th thank you very much. And uh, I, I think th this is really key the NPS itself, it's a metric. It helps us to understand the progress, what we are doing, and what, 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 what can we do. But this is only the way that we really understand what customer wants, what, what are the needs of the customer, and how to cope with them in order to improve and then to achieve the next level of, of NPS based also on, 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 on what you are saying. I think we are again coming to an end perhaps. Do you want to, to give us a short summary or your thoughts on, on, on what we discussed in the last or in the first uh, webcast and, and today? Um, yes, thank you. So I guess, you know, um, as Sam Walton, the um, uh, founder of Walmart once said, there is only one boss and that's the customer, you know? If the customer is not happy, he can, he or she can just take their money to the next, next supplier. And, uh, you know, and they are at the end of the day, the ones that define the success and sustainability of our company. So um, I think that having that very clear um, and putting the customers as Jeff Bezos of all, you know, I mean, I think we have brilliant examples uh, with Amazon with uh, um, Apple uh, of customer centric companies that really nail it down by focusing on that very um, one premise. Uh, so for me is have a vision, you know, don't think about the metric. The metric is, uh, is a lever, it's a, it helps you to understand where you are on your journey. But, uh, you know, the key is to understand who is the boss and, uh, you know, and understand that boss. Uh, because every single customer, I mean, we all have uh, other halves, uh, we have kids, we have parents, you know, a personal relationship is already difficult. Now, a, a relationship with a multitude of people, you know, that are expecting something from you requires that you really understand what these individuals are expecting from you and that you can deliver it to the best, best of their expectation. Um, so I, I guess that is... Um, that is a summary, you know, keep the customer um, as the main driver and have a very clear strategy. Use and your metrics to guide that strategy. And I, I would add even more in uh, during this COVID-19 crisis, where it's not possible to have uh, interactions, then it's even more important to understand what really customer needs are and how are they changing now that we are going to again 
uh, some months where we will have uh, any uh, some issues about COVID-19 and therefore it's important to find also a way to empathize with the customer to be with the customer and to support them and during this this crisis period it's always the best point in time to show uh, the strength of a brand and empathize with the customer i fully agree with you you know i i really think that uh, we really need to keep in mind that this is not just um, you know, the, the um, crisis is going the pandemic is going now for a long time. Uh, it is impacting people's psyches, and uh, you know, and they and we all need a little bit of extra pampering, of extra uh, listening to, of extra understanding and empathizing. I, I believe that from that point of view, it's a huge opportunities for brands to really connect to their customers. And really build, you know, because it's we, we remember how we were made feel. Um, I think it was um, um, Angelo, um, was this American lady um, who uh, Maja Angelo that says, you know, you will forget uh, what happened, but you will never forget how they made you feel, and that's very very important. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sure. Thank you very much, Anna Maria. Perhaps the last question because we discussed about NPS. And we are trying to discuss about uh, if customer would recommend a company. Then I change a bit the question is, wh which company would you recommend to us? Ooh, um, I mean, uh, there are so many companies I would recommend. But um, let me think about um, experience that made me feel really, really good. Um, stating a little bit back, um, as we were running the workshops for MPS, um, I took my first fly with KLM. Um, you know, by the second fly I took with them, they greeted me by my name. Uh, they asked me if I was going to have fish like the last time. And, uh, you know, and I, I was just absolutely, I fell in love with them. I, I felt that I was a person, I wasn't a number. And so I guess over the years that I, you know, when I traveled, if um, it was a fly with KLM, I took it and with the time they knew, you know, what I was doing and they were asking me about my project. So I felt at home with them and they have won many prizes for their customer centricity. Um, so, uh, and their loyalty program. Um, I don't, they have an excellent CRM. So probably, but this is just coming top of mind. There are many, many companies that have made enormous progress and that would really deserve uh, for me to talk about them too. I think it's also a good point in time to discuss about airlines because they are facing quite a lot of challenges and yeah. exactly what you were saying I think it's key and make that understandable that it's not always about super wow mo moments giving you the next flight for free or giving you I don't know what but it's small things about saying your name or knowing your preference and, and yeah. this is really key today and it will be also key in future if you are speaking about personalizations of the of the experiences yeah yeah but i think that's where you know it comes understanding the customer because for what for me you know might count for other people might not you know other people might be really looking for the free flight because that's their inclination and i think we have to understand that we are all different individuals and that's why when we build our personas um, you know, if we, the more we can uh, really um, stereotype, if you will, um, the different types of customers and, and understand them, you know, the better we can cater for that, what, what they expect of us. And that's the beauty of what we do, uh, because it's not a one all fit solution. Uh, it is very human. It is uh, um, very broad. Um, and it does need people, you know, it does need uh, employees that are in power, it does need employees that are recognized, um, and, you know, and it does need a very clear strategy. And I would close what, with what you are saying. Thank you very much, Anna Maria, again for, for your Thanks time. Thanks to you, Thanks to you, and all the best. Take care, uh, stay healthy. Sure, and also to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, it was a pleasure again to share some time with you, to give you some insight, more than happy to, to get your feedback, and perhaps you can tell also your colleagues which discussion we are having, and perhaps that it's also interesting. Thank you very much, take care, bye-bye. Bye, take care, bye-bye.